So oh, beautiful. I love it. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing that we talked about. I mean, when you want, you have lighter, um, wider uh, flower, it means you need to, um, uh, how to say, I mean, make it uh, more clear, uh, more beautiful by adding very dark color around it. Um, I'm not saying very dark, but uh, comparing to, I mean, contrast. Contrast, it's a good uh, word for it. You need to have contrast. And if you have uh, stronger contrast, means you will get the better result. Your subject, whatever it is, uh, pops out perfectly, uh, which you did perfect. Uh, I cannot say anything about it. Um, just it's very beautiful and this is the thing that we do uh, we have to do with when we went work wet and wet uh, only thing that I can uh, mention here is the blue that you used here which is very beautiful color and I love this blue uh, but uh, you know uh, when you use certain particular uh, color I'm sure you know it it's better to have somewhere in background or somewhere else, you know, because uh, immediately when I look at it, I just look uh, at the blue, beautiful blue here. Yeah, good point, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful, awesome. Thank you. Uh, another one, uh, we have this from Cherry, Sherry, is it Sherry or Cherry? Oh, beautiful. Oh, what a vibrant live <laughs> colors. I love it. Um, I believe she's not here. Uh, let's talk about this one maybe later because we want um, her to know about. Um, Hi. <laughs> oh, hello. Good morning. It's Sherry. Morning. Nothing fancy, oh. Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Hi. How are you today? Thanks. Actually, it's very beautiful. I love the colors that you used. Awesome, beautiful. And also, I really love this sta uh, statement here. Beautiful, beautiful. How did you do that? I mean, did you make it uh, like uh remove the color or how you did negative painting or how i used a dryer brush and the center was dry and then i picked up orange and made it kind of orangey yellow and just did it by hand deep 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 <laughs> oh beautiful awesome huh you did great All right, i love thank it you so much thank yeah. you uh, only thing that I can tell you is um, actually the colors are transparent enough. You didn't make it muddy, which is the problem for watercolor artists most of the time. Um, but you did awesome, great. But only thing that I can tell you is um, if you want to have lines, um, it's better to have them in, try to have them in one direction because when you do it like this and then you go like this, it's a kind of makes it, um, how to say, uh, distract um, the uh, attention, you know, the attention that viewers, um, want want to have when they are looking at a, a great awesome piece um the only thing or or if you want to have them for any reason uh try make them uh, in different use them in different um uh, colors i mean different values um lighter or darker uh, somehow different from um, values what you did here 
actually you have the maybe opposite direction of the lines here, but because they are not that much dark, they didn't distract um, attention to the other ways, but they are very strong and dark. So yeah. they need, need to when be When I said it to you, I knew right away when I looked at it, I, go, I don't like those lines. They're not eyelashes. I oh. was made them softer. They're too, oh, good, they're good, too good. bold. But I'm happy with my rose. I'll tell you why. I've never really painted a rose and been successful. So I was happy with that part. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's perfect. You know, uh, your rose is awesome. I, I told you, especially center of it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's very professional. Uh, even though you just did it for the first time, it's, it's like professional. Um, like professional artists, you did it. And then rose, perfect. I mean, you can see and say, this is a rose, which is which is perfect, you know, which is the goal. Um, and also I can see another flower here. I cannot say what is it, but uh, what it is, but uh, I know there is some flower uh, here, which is awesome. You know, this is the goal. Uh, as watercolor artist, you have you have to learn how to simplify things, how uh, give more by doing less. You know, it's 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 awesome. You know, you have to practice to do it. Actually, I myself have a problem with that. Still, I have problem with that, especially when I do uh, plein air. Uh, I cannot concentrate my uh, attention to uh, general big shapes. I always unconsciously go for details and small shapes in the buildings. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few of my plein air painting uh, here. I wish I had the photo of the place to show you. There are lots of things going on um, here. I mean, like build, I mean, different, uh, sizes buildings and windows, a lot of things. I tried, I tried my best to not uh, look at those small detail things, but it's a problem. So um, long story short, you have to be able to simplify things. I mean, look at the shapes in general and you are not supposed to uh, make another photograph from photograph. You have to change it to artistic um, painting, uh, you know, version of it. So it means you need to change uh, the exact um, detailed shapes to something general and play with colors, um, create depth in your painting, um, so these are uh, the artist's job. So, uh, and then especially today's um, people like to see um, your feelings inside your painting. So it's very important to do, go with your gut and do whatever you want to do at even colors that you cannot see in reference photo or in your, uh, I mean, place that you are doing and then you are painting out. Um, so yeah, it's perfect. I love it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> Thank you. And you have, you know, good things is you have the same color uh, at the top and at the bottom and you can see counterbalance in your colors that you used here. The only thing that I could tell you is um, what I told you. I mean, it's uh, the thing that you noticed uh, yourself. Okay, let's see what we have from Lorene. Oh my God, oh, so beautiful. I love it. I love this one more than mine. <laughs> it's beautiful, Lorene. Thank you. You want to say something about your beautiful um, flower? I was, I was getting a little bit discouraged for a while because um, I didn't stretch the paper first and it was buckling and the water was going everywhere. And uh, I think you can see some water lines at the bottom there on the bottom right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
but um but then all of a sudden the the flower flower just started to come out <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and it was like such a happy surprise but um and then I tried to um scrape away some of the paint um to make the lines in the center mm -hmm. and with the with yeah with um with a credit card and um I think it was too wet, so it wasn't really working too well. But then I, I also did some negative shaping in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So oh, um, I think some scraped away, um, maybe not in the best direction, but um, but uh, I, I had a little bit of success. But I think it was because the it was still too wet to try scraping it. Do you think that's what it was? Uh, uh actually yes you know uh, you have to uh practice to um uh understand that especially in in your i mean it's different from person to person you know you have to realize when you want you have you want to add more water or more color this is time to um try some effects on some try some tools on your painting i mean it depends on uh, your paper as well, your pigment, I mean, the paint uh, too, you know, these are uh, very important factors. I mean, but it's different from, from person to person. And of course, uh, the weather is very important. Um, for example, in summer, I have to work faster because I have fan in my um, studio, like over here. So it gets dry very fast. Uh, you know, it depends on, uh, you know, I'm different from person to person, but you did it perfect. You know, I don't see any mistake here, even different directions. No, it's um, wrong direction. These are good. I mean, the direction is perfect. These are, uh, they should be go in this direction, which, which is uh, very good. I mean, you did awesome. Um, and I'm happy you are, you feel happy with your flowers. Do you do watercolor more often? Yes. Um, so for a couple of years, I did, um, I took classes with a, somebody online that does realistic painting. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm tired of that. I, I don't really see the point anymore of copying a photograph exactly. And um so I'm more interested now in, in this style. And I took, a, I took some classes with you before, but uh, oh, watercolor is the only um, thing that I do. I've, I haven't tried anything else. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have to continue because I see uh, potential. It's, it's very, very beautiful. I told you I like yours better than mine. <laughs> It's lovely, wet and wet, beautiful. Now, do you use do you use hot press or cold press paper? Cold press, most okay. of the time cold press. But actually, my preference is a rough. I like rough better because it has more texture. And when you just put the a brush stroke on it, you you can immediately you you get the uh, perfect shape. I will what, uh, from whatever you want to apply to your painting. Uh, but yeah, cold press. Okay. Not not hot press. I tried hot press few times, especially they are good for landscapes, especially for seas and uh, very um, subtle, uh, soft skies, you know, and um, maybe cloudy, a very beautiful, nice cloudy, white cloudy sky. They are good for those reasons, but most of the time cold press yep okay thank you beautiful awesome and uh, let me tell you there is no problem with this hard oh. lines because sometimes it happened and it's not um bad at all the only thing that i can tell you um is uh, these two oh sorry these two lines uh, at the top they are the same shape same direction it's kind of uh, distract um, the attention. I'm not saying it's a pro big problem, but uh, you know, the things that I'm telling you right now is just because um, 
comes to my mind. And then I think it's better to uh, talk about them. It's, yeah. it's uh, not mistake or something like this. It's just my thoughts mm -hmm. that maybe it helps you in ways, you know. Um, yeah, perfect, beautiful. I love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, let's see what you have, what we have from Olga. Oh, Olga, you have, you did two, both. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and you can see uh, we have white flower here and dark flower here, which is which was the goal. You know, we had to do this. Do you want to say something about your beautiful paintings, flowers? Olga, you are. You have to unmute yourself. I think it's amateurish, and I'm still painting um, oils, the oil technique instead of watercolor technique, and so that's uh, that. And I'm over overdoing it. I don't leave it alone. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. oh. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. And I keep working on it and I'm overdoing it. See, I look at the top, too much green at the top. That should have gone light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and um, um, probably right here, top top left of that flower has, has, um, is too dark. Mm -hmm. And um, I gave you an email uh, asking, your black is very saturated and my black is transparent. Oh, this part, you mean? Yeah. What kind of black you used here? I mean, dark color. Oh, what is the color? Well, it, 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 I don't remember because it's out of the tube. Oh, okay. Okay, it's fine. You know, um, let me uh, say a few things about it. Uh, actually, I can see you do oil because it's kind of oil technique, technique, right? Solid. Exactly. Yeah, it's not watery enough. And I'm. Let me tell you this. I mean, actually, wet and wet is my personal choice. You know, there are people out there they do a wet uh, and dry. You know, there's nothing wrong with your flowers because you can say, okay, this is the uh, wet and dry technique, you know, but if you want to make it uh, wet and wet, which we did, it means you need to have, uh, um, let's call them vanishing point. Vanishing point means even if you have one single flower, I I'm gonna show you, uh, I have one over there. Uh, you need to have some part of your flower vanish to the uh, background, you know. Yeah. They have to go, how to say, I mean, together. I mean, uh, uh, how to overlap each other somehow, you know, to, to give viewers the feeling of uh, water inside your painting. Let me just show you a single flower that I did before. Okay, um, let's start with this one. Uh, you can see I have, again, white flower, but you cannot see the uh, outline of the upper side of it. You know, this, this petal here, you cannot see. Maybe you can see the pencil mark that I did before I start. Uh, can you place painting. the pencil marks? Uh, say it again. Okay. Are we supposed to erase the pencil marks afterwards? Oh, no, no. Actually, I know um, a great master of watercolor. Once he said in his interview, he said, actually, I do pencil marks after I finish my painting because I want to uh, emphasize on some part of my painting. I use pencil mark after I 
finished whole thing. You know, no, you're not supposed to erase it. Uh, I mean, again, it's uh, different from person to person, but you know, uh, you saw, I just did my flowers without any pencil marks, but when I want to have certain shape, I do pencil first. I draw the outline of it. And then there is no uh, anything wrong with having pencil mark um, on your pen. No, it's nothing. If you can erase them, yeah, why not? Just erase them. But if sometimes it's hard to get rid of them, you know, it's because the it's uh, covered by layers of the color and water. So it's very hard to remove them, which is okay. No, it doesn't matter um, at all. So what I was talking about is uh, I have single flower here, but a part of the flower vanished to the um, background and the other side of it, it's kind of dark and, um, and also, the background color goes inside the uh, flower. Let me just show you another one. Okay, you can see the background completely is, I mean, I didn't uh, do this one intentionally. It happened when I was, because it was too wet. When I applied the dark color for the background, it kind of uh, went to, to the petal which is very, I mean, I can call it happy accident because I love it. <laughs> I love this part of my flower. I tried to make it another one like this, but I couldn't get the, this perfect, beautiful shadow at the bottom. Um, you know, when you are doing wet and wet, it means some part of your uh, flowers needs to be washed out into the background. It's not too late. Olga, you can just uh, wrap the uh, brush with a clean water. Just go straight towards the um, background. But remember, if you go uh, forth and back, you mean it means you are grabbing the color of the background into your uh, petals. If you like to have the color over there, okay, do it. But if you don't want uh, to ruin your uh, whiteness that you have here, just go one direction, you know, and then wash the brush again, one direction. Wash it and then one direction. Actually, it happened here. See, you cannot see any border between your, um, the, this, this petal with background. It happened here which is very beautiful. You can see. Um, I think the biggest problem with mine is I over, overwork it. Uh, you know, because you do oil, it's you have to overdo oil. I know because I had several experience in doing oil. You have to uh, add layers and layers and layers in oil. Even you have to put it for, I don't know, uh, the next day. <coughs> then go back to add another layer to it. I know, uh, you know, it's a kind of habit, but you have to get used to doing wet, especially wet on wet. You know, it's, it's totally different from uh, oil concept or other uh, mediums. Um, the only thing that I can tell you is this, that you told uh, us yourself, you know, the same thing. And then, you know, actually you have the uh, blurry, beautiful, but over there, which is good because they are out of focal point. And also if you uh, didn't go back to add those lines again, it was good too, because again, it's out of focal point. Focal point is this um, flower over here. And then, of course, you know, you have to wash them out. Uh, sometimes you have to use a spray bottle to spray uh, the color uh, in one direction. I mean, towards the bottom down, downwards or, I mean, spread it out. Um, yep. Other than that, um, I can tell you it's perfect because you can see the a folding shape of the flower and yeah there are 
lots of good thing about your painting, but considering wet and wet, yes, as you said, you have to not overdo it. I mean, uh, once I remember um, an artist uh, said, uh, I mean, actually he said, it's not true, but I uh, say this to my student um, to keep them away from overdoing. I uh, tell them that the, the, there is some um, layer, I mean, uh, how, how to say, I mean, it's a um, um, secret layer on the surface of paper. You are not supposed to do uh, overdo it, go over things three times because uh, you are ruining that, that secret uh, layer of the paper, so it may ruin your painting forever. But it was a made up story, you know, it wasn't real. <laughs> he said, it's, I just tell my students <laughs> this because I want them to uh, keep them away from overdoing things. I told them, okay, not more than three times. You need to just do your painting with two times strokes. You know, you have to just add two times. Um, yeah, as you said, um, but, but it takes time, but it's beautiful. I love it. Okay, Tana. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, did you do it again, Tana? Or is it the same that you? I say I might have touched it up a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Beautiful, awesome. I love it. I love uh, the way that you did it. Especially, I really love the um, edges that you made on your uh, flower. They are different from each other, and they are perfect. Again, maybe this color that you used here, it's better to have. Actually, you have a few of it um, in these places too but this is strong color maybe you need to have in background a little bit of it too that's it other than that perfect awesome okay. beautiful thank you yeah lovely oh thank you guys uh, I'm so impressed and I believe we are done um, okay um, beautiful beautiful I love all the um, paintings that you sent me. Um, okay, let's talk about landscape, uh, which is the um, today's um, topic. Okay. Um, okay, let me show you a few uh, of my um, outdoor, if I can say, plan error painting. Um, okay. Um, I forget the name of the place we went. Maybe I uh, find it and then send it to you. Uh, but it was full of buildings all around and beautiful things. And then I just uh, did few, um, uh, capture few view of the um, that beautiful buildings. You know, I did first. I did this one, and then I thought, okay, it's good to do just a building, which was this one. I just did. Uh, actually, it took maybe 10, 15 minutes um, or so. Um, uh, I want you. I show. Uh, these paintings to you because I want you to know um, you are not supposed to do everything in in a place that you are in. Actually, I was in the same spot, you know, when I did this and I did this one. Um, I just focus on the building, just this one, you know, I didn't pay attention to the rest. Um, so this is one experience that I had, uh, which is very different, totally different from uh, painting it, um, in studio. Uh, so try it uh, sometimes. <laughs> it's very 
um, joyful. Okay, uh, you can have um, winter, very simple winter um, landscape. Also, we have, um, we can do um, cloudy uh, day, focus on sky more than um, buildings. In this one, uh, we decided, actually we had a photo, photograph, it was building and, and sky. And uh, we picked sky as a focal point. That's why we put small portion of the paper for um, buildings and trees. And most of the paper is about clouds and sky. Uh, for this one, we focus on building and uh, nothing else is important. Maybe you have a lot of things here, uh, flowers, rocks, or things over here, but they are not important. Our focal point, our choice priority is the building. So focus on the building. And remember, when you want to do buildings, you need to make them very, um, um, how to say, destructive. I mean, they have to be very, I mean, use, feel free to use ruler, even ruler, because they have to be um, in perfect shape. You know, if they are in your focal point, of course, then they are not. So a few suggestions would be enough, but still you need to have the very straight, destructive lines and touches, even touches. Um, I guess, Oh, okay. Um, another thing with dark clouds, not always white clouds. Um, okay. Um, uh, Fatemajan, I think you have to uh, mute yourself. We can hear you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this is cloudy weather with sea, water, and boats here. So, uh, you know, I showed you these kind of um, paintings to get the idea how um, how big is the subject? You know, landscape is not just uh, about trees, it's about everything, even figures, cars, you know, you, it's, it's a kind of another world. Um, but we cover few things today. We cannot talk about whole things, um, but we cover um, the general basics, ideas about landscape. And then we try one or two to get the perfect um, ideas for doing our personal things. I mean, it could be a rock and a baby sea, that's it. And few birds over there. Um, and Mali Beach, I did it and I ruined my paper <laughs> somehow. Um, told you, you can use figures. Actually, they were, they were not any, I mean, uh, this, these people there, I just add them later for this dog. <laughs> I just add them. What later. do you do about that blemish? Uh, about what? About this blemish um, in a paper. I, paper? Oh, damaged the paper? Yeah, what are you going to do with that? Oh, okay. You know, it was uh, sometimes I put my um, painting, I mean, the paper, uh, I put them under the uh, rug and let it uh, stay on the pressure of the rug to get very, I mean, uh, how to say straight, you know. How like, about ironing it? No, 
Oh, uh, yes. Sometimes I iron them. And then again, I put them under the rock. And I had a, I uh, wear uh, high heels and walk over it. So it's a just a place of those, uh, their uh, shoes <laughs> that I wore that day, you know. I just walk over it. And then later I uh, found out that, oh my God, I ruined my painting. <laughs> <laughs> by doing that yeah so sad i tried to fix it but i believe i cannot do it okay another um painting um cloudy weather scene we talk about uh water today um as well and i did this one um last year it won a prize honorable mention um, still, it's a, you can call it landscape, I believe, because it's a kind of out um, door painting, something like this. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's start um, painting. And uh, again, I told you, it's a, it's a world, you know, we cannot um, go over all the uh, facts about landscape, but we try to have a quick um, glimpse of it, okay? Um, let's start take the paper. I want to make sure that I have the perfect uh, without any gap between tape and paper. So I go over it by a paper towel. Um, I'm not going to use reference for today um, because I want to show you how you can create your own imaginary um, landscape. Okay, you can start with very simple um, shapes, but remember in landscape, uh, perspective is very important and also the depth. Actually in painting, it's very important. I mean, the depth is very important. Even if you are doing um, flower, uh, it's very important to have depth in your painting. How you can create depth by make some part of your painting blurry, foggy, and neutral. Um, see them, they are very far, they are in stands, and make few things or part of your flower um, very uh, clear and in detail. Um, so you can see uh, most of the um, things in foreground. Okay, so um, the same thing, the same concept for landscape, you know, they are, sometimes you have to um, notice to this fact, uh, there are some rules, general rules that you can apply to everything. I mean, this is one of those. Um, actually, you know, I did oil before, acrylic, soft pastel, any kind of painting. I tried them and I have a beautiful painting, um, made beautiful painting uh, from, uh, I mean, out of them. But uh, what I, uh, I've learned from 
whole things that I did. I did calligraphy, many things, you know. Uh, one thing that I learned from um, my experience is there are certain rules that you can apply to everything, you know, even for decorating your um, place, your house, is the same thing that you are uh, painting a flower, you know. Uh, there are certain rules that you have to notice. Um, you can use them perfectly. One of them is, um, oh, okay. Um, one of them is this. You need to have depth, contrast, um, different values. These three things uh, apply for everything. Even you want to decorate your home, you need to uh, consider the, these um, these three rules. Uh, of course, there are more uh, more than um, these three rules, but um, I'm saying that um, I'm trying to say uh, if you know uh, watercolor, for example, and you know um, these facts about uh, watercolor, it means you can. Um, do the same thing for oil, acrylic, or pastel. Okay, oh, I have to change the direction. Sorry for that. Got it. Okay, so depth uh, is very important. How we can create depth? By uh, make the things that they are far from us in the stands, make them more neutral means using um, uh, neutral colors and also lighter, I mean, with consistency of tea uh, and general big shapes, not um, more than that. Okay, let's try it on paper. I believe you can see uh, the concept, to get the concept better if we, do it on paper. Um, and then we will back for um, a photo that I'm gonna show you um, for the water, okay? But now um, I wanna do just, okay, to show you how you can create uh, depth in your painting. Okay, uh, so for landscape, uh, simple landscape, I'm not talking about uh, city, urban, um, city landscapes, figures, cars, none of them. Just very simple. Sky, we have sky. Uh, we have some trees or uh, mountains in distance. And we have a foreground, like it could be uh, flowers, grass, or things like this, OK? So let's do, um, and then. When you have this kind of things, you need to decide which part is very important for you. The sky is important for you or the uh, foreground, which could be flowers or whatever, which one is more important to you. Um, for example, I showed you that in these two, um, the sky is more important because we have, um, we put a uh, smaller space for foreground and bigger space for um, the sky. Um, the same thing. Um, and also it creates more depth because they are in the uh, in distance. Uh, let's start with um, having um, maybe the same portion. Let's say the same portion, but uh, you you can have different things. I mean, because this is imaginary, we don't have any reference photo for this one. I just do, I can add many things to it. I'm not saying uh, it's a perfect way to add things to it, but it's just for studying um, landscape. It's not for having perfect shape of um, something. Okay, let's um, do not half, but I'm not, uh, I don't want to have um, the focal point as sky, but 
still I make almost the same proportion for land and um, the sky, but most part of it is sky, but not like um, dominant um, part of my painting. So I divide it into not half, but maybe I can say one third uh, ground and two third sky. You can change the uh, thing, I mean, the opposite, do the opposite thing. Okay, I want to have sky and mountains and trees and a little bit rocks uh, at the, uh, I mean, um, in, the, in the foreground, okay? So it means I need to uh, make my focal point. It could be in between, I can make this part uh, trees, uh, my choose them as my um, focal point, or I can pick those rocks and flowers maybe at the bottom. I decided right now, you know, it's just from my imagination. But I want you to see how you can make depth in your painting. Okay, um, you can clean your palettes and then start with new fresh colors or you can use leftover here because sometimes leftover makes very beautiful neutral colors, especially for landscape. You can use leftover here or very easily you can just um, clean whole things and start it again. Uh, okay, let's start. I believe it's better to just clean them up and start with a fresh color. Sometimes I feel guilty <laughs> when I'm cleaning my palette because I think, okay, I had beautiful mixing colors here. Oh. And again, in this, this is the leftover masking fluid. Um, you can use masking fluid in this, any kind of techniques that we learned um, first day in first day of workshop, you can um, apply to landscape as well. You know, maybe we try some of them. Okay. Um, okay, I wanted to have, I want to have the, I mean, sky and then uh, mountain flowers here and rock. Okay, let's get started. I need just one line because I know what I'm um, supposed to do. Um, okay, so, um, and then in now you can do two things. One of them is just cover the land part by um, putting some uh, tape over here, which sometimes we use it for um, the line of horizon and uh, sea over here. You can just put the tape over here uh, and then you will get the very sharp um, line for horizon, which is sometimes perfect, but I'm not doing it right now. Um, Okay, I put it in with my paper to use gravity force and then double check the tape. I don't want, I don't want to have gap between the tape and the paper. Okay, so I went to, and then uh, I told you, you can just cover the horizon line or you can just wet this part sky first and then wet the land part. Um, or you can do uh, both at the same time, you know, 
they are valid technique for doing landscape. You can do these three that we told you. I mean, but um, I try to wet the paper, whole paper, uh, because I, I can cover whole things. Maybe I want to have the same color at the bottom. And also because the size of the paper is small, I can cover whole things. But if it was very big, um, for sure, I just wet the sky first and then go for the rest of the painting. But now it's too small. So let's um, wet whole thing. And the size of the brush that I'm gonna use for this is number 12 or 10. Um, it could be round. Actually, the, they are different from brand to brand. This one is nine, but trust me, it's 12. <laughs> you can use 12. Um, let's see. Oh, look at this. Almost the same size, but this one is 14, you know? brand to brand, it, they are different from brand to brand. Um, so it doesn't matter. Or you can use flat brush. It could be, um, this is too big for this small size of paper. So uh, I go with the angled one, which is smaller. Uh, I want to cover, uh, the bigger part of the paper with one or two strokes. Let me see if I have perfect. Yep. Now we can see the whole thing. Um, okay, let's start. Uh, so for sky, you can use ultramarine blue, or I told you I like uh, Persian blue, um, or mixed them together you know they are still blue and they are beautiful and cobalt blue is good too let's see we have cobalt blue um and ultramarine ultramarine is a little darker or mixing of both but uh persian blue is kind of very light let's see Okay, um, I start with uh, cobalt blue um, and start from the top of the um, paper, which is the top of the sky for me here. Okay, and go straight uh, from side to side. You need to cover whole um, things. There shouldn't be any gap between the paper and the uh, um, color. We don't need to have that. And then when I'm going down, it means I'm washing out the um, color. So you see uh, the gradually, um, how to say, I'm sure it has a word, <laughs> but I cannot remember the word right now, but uh, gradual wash uh, from one single color. Uh, which is cobalt blue here. Um, okay, you can go over it again. And remember, if you want to have cloud, it's time to have them. If you want to have the dark kind of clouds, you need to dry your brush. Actually, my brush is dry because it's um, another brush. So dry your brush because you have um, wet paper here and Pick another color. It could be any kind of color because you, you're you gonna have the shape of the um, clouds. They could be dark or even light. Um, so if you want to have white clouds, you can just remove by lifting up technique. Oh, it has color on it. Hmm. You can call it happy accident. <laughs> okay, with clean water, you can shape your um, clouds. You know, they are not supposed to be 
um, very round uh, thing. Or you can use paper towel to remove the shape of the clouds, you know, like this. And I will uh, do another technique in next one because I cannot do it here. So then you get the um, light, I mean, white uh, fluffy clouds, um, or if you use uh, brush, then you'll get the, again, white um, cloud as well. You know, I use two techniques for these uh, white clouds over here. Um, then you can add um, darker value to them, like any kind of gray uh, or mixing left over here. I had beautiful gray here, but now I don't have it. Maybe I just mix a little bit of left over that I have in my right side of the palette or uh, mixing opposite colors. Um, opposite of blue, uh, I'm sure you know what is the opposite of blue? What is it? Can you tell me? <laughs> Orange. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A little bit orange to it. Um, to the blue. So it makes it kind of neutral, dark color. So. Um, I need wet paper, you know, I have to wet it again. Um, so again, um, in one side of the um, uh, clouds, you can add this dark color. Uh, but remember, they need to have uh, the random shapes. They are not um, like, um, same uh, shapes and also you can wash the hard edges inside the cloud. Um, and if you want to have uh, dark clouds all around, um, actually you can add more dark to it, you know, um, I'm not saying that you have to do all things that I'm doing here. It's just for studying clouds. Um, it's not about, uh, you have to use whole thing at the same um, sky, you know, just make, oh, darker value with indigo. It's a good one. Or again, you can make the darker um, color from mixing ultramarine with orange, uh, which, are opposite, so makes um, beautiful dark color here. Again, it's a darker value, neutral, and then you can add the darker value at the bottom of the clouds, or separately you can add dark um, clouds to your painting. Uh, but as you see, I'm using the clouds with big body in the center, and when I extend the cloud <clears throat> in both sides. I just make it um, smaller and smaller and then dots. You can use dots as well. Um, you know, maybe it's not a beautiful um, sky because it has dark clouds and light clouds, which is not normal. Um, but you know, it's just for studying clouds. Okay, let's just wash the edges. And I'm trying to fade this dark um, cloud here, but I don't want to have this, this much dark over here. So I try to get rid of this dark one, but I, I believe you got the idea how we can create dark um, clouds as well. 
again, I just wash the edges, blend everything. <clears throat> Um, that's it. Okay, not more than this. Just if I can get rid of the dark cloud, it would be perfect. Uh, but it's okay, you know. Never mind. Then um, I want to have the. mountain in distance. It means I need to add them when the paper is wet. Okay, how can I do it? Um, I need to wet the paper again because it's not wet enough. Still wet, but not wet enough. Okay, mounting instance. The same color that I made for dark um, clouds, which is mixing for me indigo plus <clears throat> um, burnt sienna or burnt umber. Um, you can make uh, you make uh, I mean neutral color with mixing any um, colors, doesn't matter. Sometimes you can see the, I mean, even red, orange sky uh, in paintings. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them, uh, but for this particular one, okay, I just mix indigo, wealth, burnt, um, sienna. Uh, okay, I guess it's dark enough. And because the paper is wet, so I need to dry my brush <clears throat> perfectly. You know, so let me tilt paper to have the same amount of water that I have here. It's a kind of puddle here. So, okay, mountain in distance. I go with the shape of them with a very dark um, color that I made. Oh, it's not dark enough. Again, yeah, another mixture. Okay. Um, and the shape of the uh, mountain in distance. Uh, because the paper is wet, uh, you cannot see any hard lines. Um, on the on the mountain, and also you know uh, they should be uh, like a bumpy, kind of go up and down, but um, try not to make them. Um, even, okay. So again, go out of the um, paper, like go over the tape. Because um, at the end, we want to have one whole shape of it. Um, okay, now I want to have um, trees. And I showed you before, you can create uh, trees by having, let me just go towards the horizon to make sure that we have whole mountain at the background. Um, you know, you can create that uh, trees with sponge or because the paper is wet, um, we want to make it like, um, with dry brush and go for the trees. And let me tell you another thing that I want to tell you. Sometimes, uh, especially for 
those who do um, oil, like Olga. <laughs> if you have ruined uh, brush, keep them for um, this situation. Um, or if you don't have um, ruined old brush, you can just ruin um, yours, you know, by um, cutting it like um, with scissors uh, or, or actually I found this brushes, you know, with uneven um, tip. I bought them from Dollar Street. <laughs> Can you believe it? Uh, and they are very good for uh, creating the texture of the tree. Or um, I told you, I mean, this is the ruined fan brush. I mean, I just cut it and um, squeeze it to make it like um, destroyed brush. Uh, this kind of brushes are very helpful um, here. So I just made this one before, just squeeze it like this. But th those brush uh, that we use for oil, because they are harder than this, they um, work more, I mean, better. Uh, okay, when you have something like this, okay, now it's time. We have the um, wet paper. So it's okay to just put the color like this. Um, because if you do use this kind of brush, it means you are creating leaves as well at the same time, you know? Um, it's not just, let's say, um, they are not just trees, the whole shape of trees. They are, they could be like, leaves, small little leaves all around. Of course, you need to um, fade them out at the bottom because we are not supposed to um, have whole um, leaves on trees. It could be bush in the foreground or um, any kind of green. Um, greens that you want to have in your painting. And I just add a little um, dark brown to it to have variety in um, the green that I have here. Okay, trees again, different shapes. And I try to have those um, trunks. Um, you know, remember we talked about lines and dots. Um, here I'm using dots and lines too much and I'm trying to have um, different um, uneven shapes for those trees in the stems. Um, maybe sometimes it's good to have lighter green. You can have lighter green. It's too wet. Um, but it's better to use darker um, values because again, they are uh, in distance and it depends on how far they are from you or your foreground, they getting uh, more, I mean, neutral and darker, you know. That's it. It's a kind of Bob Ross painting. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, um, feel free to go back to make some part of it darker, lighter, or I told you, you can use the techniques that we learned, just make um, light lines um, by scratching 
some part of it, I mean, in different directions or adding uh, darker lines um, to it, but not too much, you know, not too much details on that part because they are far from us, they are in distance. So we don't need to make them like very um, um, in details. Uh, but I wanted to show you how you can use ruined um, brush. Even you can use a uh, ruined brush for close uh, trees, I mean, foreground trees, because uh, it creates um, like leaves all around. So it's very helpful. Okay, the rest is a ground and rocks. Okay, we can just cover the upper part with a piece of paper or a piece of something <laughs> or with hand and with the bottom part. Um, okay. Um, for the ground, I want to use the, uh, actually the same color at the same time because it's ground. So it's mostly should be um, in earthy um, color, which could be yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, this kind of stuff. But remember, in, in any kind of painting, you need to uh, circulate colors. So it's good to have a touch of uh, blue here, but you know, I put a gap between the land and the trees. Um, later, I can go back to cover uh, that gap. But for now, um, I want to have that gap. Uh, and you can see in places that I touch um, the trees, water um, grab some color from the trees and grab them downwards, which is good because we, at the end, we want to have the same color all over the painting. The same green that I used for um, uh, trees, I'm gonna use for the land and um, randomly I just um, add brush strokes. And now I start to do yellow ochre in some place and you know, it's kind of um, like sky we did because we need to add um, a little um, a bumpy, how to say, texture to our land, you know? So I go to over it and put some Um, darker value to it, but randomly, you know, we don't have any reference photos. So squint your eyes and see what you want to add to them. And then when I'm getting closer to foreground, I make my strokes bigger and use darker values. Actually, we want to have the rocks over here. Um, Okay, let's make rocks here. I use flat brush for adding rocks. Um, Cause the sh shapes are very important. I want to have a rock here. Okay, I go um, for the shape of it. And you can see, I just wash the edge of it. Um, I'm gonna explain it to you later, okay? So, um, because it's rock, so it has a very hard texture. Um, this is the first color that I applied here. The second one um, should be um, stronger um, with more consistency and darker. And because they are in foreground, they need to be, um, darker, even darker. So I'm using sepia for them. Uh, and I make 
mix it with indigo because I used indigo uh, at the upper part, this part, so it's okay to use it here again. And, but mix it with um, a little sepia. So, and indigo itself, it's a very dark color, but I'm applying this color um, somewhere closer to the bottom of my thing. Um, okay, uh, so when I have this much dark color at the bottom, it means um, I can create texture on them by adding salt maybe, by um, spattering even white, Chinese white. Um, watercolor or even white gouache. Uh, again, I'm gonna cover the rest and then spatter a few things. I mean, uh, Chinese white uh, droplets over my rocks. Uh, you know, they create the texture. I'm not saying Chinese only uh, color that you can use for this um, technique is Chinese white. You can even use darker value like indigo that you used before. Even you can spatter that indigo color, which is dark color over here. And then we don't want them at the top, so just remove them. And then, you know, this is a kind of happy accident right now. You have to cover this part to do it. But when I did this, so it means I got few um, flowers over here. So again, I can spatter like different color, which is orange, because we had orange in our color. And you remember the mixed orange with blue to get the neutral color. Uh, so we ha already have um, orange, but it's hidden in mix with another uh, color over there. So again, you can just cover some part of it and then spatter a few orange here. Uh, of course, you can um, use masking fluid to do this. You remember we did before. Um, okay, when I'm done with, with it, I go back for rocks to make them more structured. Um, And also I use my fan brush to um, have stems and lines. Let me just dry my brush because it's too wet. And go for the uh, flowers. I'm not doing things all over the um, paper or uh, for any of them, but few touches would be enough and even a little darker, which could be burnt sienna. Um, and also lines towards the and um, fan brush to create a grassy lines over here. They could be in different directions, even opposite directions, uh, but um, I don't make them very um, dark. Maybe a little bit over there. 
But if you add uh, this kind of grass in the stands, it means you need to wash them in some part. Then you will get the softer edges over there. Okay, dark value. And you know, um, sometimes you need to darker value to um, make your flowers pop out. So it's good to uh, change the direction of the paper. Okay, and then uh, with negative painting, um, it's, I, I'm shaping the shape of the um, rocks. Also, I'm creating dark value, uh, dark part of the um, grass, you know, which is the bottom of them. Um, again, don't overdo it. And now you can see we have the rocks uh, better. But of course, we need to um, wash the hard lines over here and um, connect it to the, the rest of the um, land, which is this part. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it for whole things here because, you know, um, it's not good to have the same thing all over the painting. Uh, actually, you can leave it like this. I mean, it's a kind of organic and wet and wet painting here. You can see rocks and uh, flowers. But uh, if you want to separate rocks from the rest of the painting, you have to do this. And also, um, again, we don't want to have hard lines. So I'm going to wash the, this a edge as well. I mean, I'm going to wash it um, towards the um, rock. I mean, from inside and outside. And again, maybe I have another hard lines here, so wash them out. And with darker color that I used here, so I make um, those um, lines and dots um, in some places. If you just add few um, dark, the same dark color that we use at the bottom, uh, somewhere at the top, it helps to have, um, I mean, uh, counterbalance of this value as well. Um, okay, I'm sure you've got the idea. And then uh, anytime you, uh, you are going to have the landscape, it's, it's very good to have you birds um, in the sky because uh, by adding them, you are creating movement in your painting, okay? Um, yeah, and then just wash the, I mean, clean the tape. We don't want to ruin our paint. Of course, we remove the tape later, but for now, um, is this? Uh, I told you, I mean, Okay. Guys, would you please uh, mute yourself because we have background noise. Um,
Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know. I can mute everyone or not. I'm not. I don't know. Um, but please mute yourself because we have background background noise. Um, Fatima John, you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, uh, so any questions and comments on this one? Most of the time you are not supposed to do whole things in one painting. You don't need them, you know, because it's, it's kind of over doing um, like you are muting uh, some part of your painting because told you again, I mean, you have to have the um, focal points of, so if you just go, I mean, do rocks, uh, trees, uh, clouds, uh, flowers, you know, add more things to it. It means you are um, kind of the focal point um, is getting lost in the chaos that you um, make with adding, a uh, lot of things. Okay, we were supposed to talk about that that gap over there. You can um, cover it with adding few lines like this. Let me show you how you can cover those. I mean, they could be um, lines. I mean, I don't know fences or whatever um, in the in the stands between these trees, uh, sky and the ground, or, but of course you have to wash them out, you know, we don't need to have them in perfect um, shapes. And also uh, uh, by doing this, it means you are uh, making shadows on the ground and also you are making the horizon line uh, more, I mean, perfect. You know, you can make the horizon line uh, just uh, better and more visible. So just wash the bottom of it. Uh, they are not supposed to be the same shape in same shapes or same um, size. Or again, you can just uh, tape, um, use tape to have very straight line in distance, but we don't need it because uh, we use it for uh, the horizon between sea and sky because it's very straight line. But in this case, it's a kind of land. So, um, it, it's normal to be bumpy and not in straight line. So it's okay. Um, that's why I squint my eyes and I see, okay, it's better to have um, a little color maybe over here because I see a little gap here. But of course, I'm gonna wash them out in some part to get um, a little movement here. And also, because if you have the rock um, shapes in foreground, um, it's better to have them a little bit in background too. But uh, of course we need to have them uh, more neutral, not very sharp and um, light and smaller, of course, because they are in distance. Few um, brush strokes uh, create movements. Um, on uh, 
few small tiny rocks in this things would be enough. Okay, done. Um, so let me know your thoughts about this one. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, um, unmute yourself and um, give your thoughts or comments or questions. Uh, sometimes I put my uh, paintings um, in front of the TV and look at it when I'm watching uh, movies or um, TV, uh, I just look at my paintings uh, from time to time to see uh, pros and cons. And, you know, and it's a, I, I got very good points when I uh, look at them um, continuously and I can see I have to change this part uh, and I do it, I mean, after I finish my painting. Uh, for example, I see this line here, which is not good, I don't like it. So I want to wash it out and I'm not worried about ruining my painting, you know, because I told you, I mean, um, maybe I ruin it, but it's worth to try uh, fixing things that we don't like them, you know, it's worth it. So I just go over the rock um, and push them out like this. Uh, I feel better now. I didn't like that hard line, dark line over here. To me, it's not like wet and wet painting. It was like very um, wet and dry. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Go ahead, Susan. You want to say something? Oh, is it me? I guess I could. Yeah. Um. When you were doing the sky and the, you used the orange with the blue, do you ever use burnt sienna with, I mean, the, there's that combination ultramarine and burnt sienna that makes that gray also. Yep. And, it, yep. and it does granulate also, which gives a little more texture. Do you ever use that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, my preference is burnt sienna, mixing burnt sienna with any kind of colors, especially with ultramarine that you said. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I'm trying always, I'm trying to say um, that this is my um, idea that mm -hmm. don't mention um, colors that they are important. I'm not saying they are not, but uh, when you are trying to do things and you don't have, for example, burnt sienna, ultramarine, uh, you think, oh, I cannot do it because I don't have these colors. Mm -hmm. um, colors are not that much important they are important but not that much important because sometimes you can create um but, i mean a cloudy sky out of i don't know um even green <laughs> you know it's mm -hmm. it could be abstract and um thing but yeah you said i mean burnt sienna ultramarine it's perfect combination of those colors for okay. especially for landscape and sky yeah i agree okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and congrats. Oh, thank you. Those beautiful cutie yeah. pies. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm watching you paint, so I, it, it's helping me get through. Oh, 
Oh, good, <laughs> good. We can't, because with COVID, we can't go see them yet. So I know, I know. And I'm happy I made your time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Make so, it easier for you. <laughs> I did very much. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or thoughts on this one? If there's no questions, let's have maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, you can try this or part of it, this one. I'm not saying you have to do all things, just do rocks, just do clouds, whatever you want, or, or trees, even trees, try trees um, in this 15 minutes or have coffee or something, <laughs> enjoy your time. And then we will talk about um, skies and see uh, if we have enough time, we can talk about buildings as well a little bit, okay? So see you after 15 minutes, see you. But if you have any questions, you can ask me because I'm walking around here, I'm doing stuff um, near here, okay? I can hear you. Okay, thank you guys. Let's see what we have. Thank you.
حالا کوچه خیلی خواهیش شده درسته؟ Fatima?
Okay, let's go back to work. Um, let me put it away. Um, Fatima? Uh, yes, Lorraine? Sometimes I notice that um, if I take a picture of my work, then all of a sudden things um, stand out to me as needing something else or uh, um, so, so I think that taking, so I do put my paintings in, in the room and keep looking at them for a while, but I find taking a picture really helps too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I agree. It's true. Uh, you know, you have to somehow, you have to, uh, how to say, um, look at it and then uh, frame it somehow to see, uh, to get more focused on uh, the details that's happening in your painting. Uh, taking photo, it's, it's awesome, yeah. And also, if you just change the uh, value when you take photo, sometimes I do the same. I mean, and make it like uh, black and white. Uh, you have some in edit uh, photos, you have some, um, I don't know, a key or something that make your painting uh, uh, black and white. Then you will get the contrast better as well, you know. Um, that's why sometimes I do this because I want to see uh, the distance is appear in my painting or not. You know, I mean, the color, comparing color to each other. Yeah, I agree. Good point. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, let's do the um, sky and sea. Um, the same thing. Um, it's happening to it, uh, except you need instead of, actually you can add trees because sometimes you can see um, in horizon, you can see uh, the beach line and then you can see buildings and uh, maybe trees in distance. Uh, but let's start doing um, water and see how it goes because we want to do it like, um, without any um, reference photo. Um, you know, we can do photos, but uh, I told you, I mean, it's a different story because um, you have to know how you can simplify the photo. Uh, maybe we'll have another workshop uh, about doing, um, simplifying how we can simplify uh, photos. And also we can have another workshop maybe on just colors because it's a kind of complicated, um, uh, beautiful story about colors. And also I want you to know about the water soluble um, pencils, uh, but I don't like it, but um, for fun, you can just do it if you, let me show um, how we can use them. Uh, okay, I need a piece of paper. Okay, yeah. we can do it here. Um, if you just make uh, whatever you want to do, um, just try it with these pencils. I'll make a bigger gap for that one. Um, I mean, I don't like it. I never use them, but uh, they could be fun. You know, I have these pencils, so um, they could be fun using them. Uh, okay, you can draw your... Um, flower, for example, um, and um, do the center, color it very fast, um, and have hatches um, somewhere even 
you can have a darker value um, around the center of it somewhere. Um, it, it looks like you are doing painting with a colored pen pencil. Um, um, create the uh, um the shadow side and light side which makes it 3d three-dimensional uh, the same thing you have to do um, on your whatever you are um, you want to have as a watercolor but it's like colored pencil and also maybe a little bit of um, green or even a leaf could be here. Um, just a simple sketch. Uh, we want to know how it turns to watercolor. It looks colored pencil, but when you just wet it, You will get the um, watercolor painting. And you can see how they, um, the lines change into the watercolor. Um, you know, these pencils are good when you want to have, uh, instead of pencil, using pencil for drawing, sketching things, um, you can use these pencils, uh, then you'll, you'll be sure that um, you won't have the uh, pencil marks on your painting, because they water soluble, soluble, so you can easily just with adding um, water to them, you can just make make it make them vanish. Um, so, because I had these pencils, I wanted to share with you. So, um, I can say it's fun sometimes playing with them. Um, again, you need to stretch your paper or um, just have frame around your paper. It helps to keep clean the rest, uh, the rest of the uh, Block, uh, and also it helps you to get your um, painting framed, kind of framed. Uh, hmm. Uh, I told you before, every Saturday we have class in Zoom um, from 10.30 to 12.30 uh, in Pacific time, of course. And um, you can join the class. Uh, just email me and then I can add you to the class. And the first session is free, so <laughs> you can join anytime. Um, like okay uh, so again the same thing for the sea 
um, landscape. You can have sky or you can have uh, water um, as your focal point. Um, but again, because we, I want to show you how you can do both. So I divided not in half, but one third. You can even have more sky or more water. It depends on your preference. Um, yeah, okay, let's get started. Uh, in this one, I try to have uh, not the same size, but again, one third C um, and two third the sky. Because I want to show you how you can have different colors in your sky as well. Um, so let's start with wedding paper. In this case, because we have the straight line for um, the horizon, um, so you can use the tape here. I'm gonna show you how you can use it, okay? Um, but uh, let's start with the first wash and for second wash, I'm gonna use tape to show you how you can have the straight fine line. Uh, it's not, um, you know, it's not must, to do it, to have this, this tape, but, but you know, it's a kind of um, helping uh, tool, you know. Um, just a second, I'm gonna change the dirty water. Um, okay, let's start with wedding paper. Uh, now for this one, I'm gonna use different uh, colors. Uh, I start with um, yellow, ochre uh, and add a lot of pink to it. And um, you know, for this kind of sky, you can mix your colors with white, Chinese white. It makes it a little um, dull, so, uh, and neutral, uh, and it's, it's very good for um, this kind of sky. But I have pink, you know, I have, uh, what is it, flesh tint? Uh, which is beautiful pink here. And also, um, okay, but now I can mix my um, yellow ochre with a little Chinese white. Um, so it makes it a little, I mean, more neutral. Um, or you can use yellow ochre without mixing with, um, white, Chinese white. Okay, let's start with sky. But of course, whatever I have in sky, it's um, in water too. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I've never heard um, sky is a reflection of the water or vice versa when it's cloudy and over the <laughs> sea. Uh, but whatever it is, we have to do um, the same use, the same color that we use for sky we have to use the same color for uh, the water as well. Okay, let's start from the horizon. And of course, I can do go both ways, you know, in water and um, in sky. A gradual wash towards the top and gradual wash towards the bottom. Uh, 
And remember, you need to go over the tape because you don't want to have any line, harsh line, white line in between. Uh, I have this, let's make it stronger. You know, sometimes you have reference photo that they are not like this, but um, as a photo, they may be perfect and beautiful, but uh, you have to change it into painting. So you need to um, do some adjustment. Um, this is one of them, you know, even if you cannot see the exact color in the water or in the sky, just try to do it because it helps, um, helps you to have um, better, result, get the better result. Okay, now uh, the pink that I told you is uh, flesh tint, but you know, you can uh, mix a little um, red to um, Chinese wh white, or maybe orange to Chinese white. I mean, mix them to get the beautiful neutral color. And I'm gonna use this color um, somewhere over here, maybe. Um, um, a little uh, further from the horizon line. Okay. Uh, I told you I talked about orange. You can use orange as well. See, I add orange to the mixture. Mm. And try to keep the paper wet. Um, and also the same color here in the water, okay? It's a lot of orange here. Um, so now we need a um, kind of blue, which could be again, ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. Okay, let's use, um, or any kind of blue, it should be blue. Again, the paper is wet, the consistency of color is T. Um, actually, that's the uh, next color that I used here, it was um, in consistency of coffee, because you know, it was the second layer, so I wanted to be in a certain place, so. Start with blue over here, grab it down with the same brush. I'm going down towards the um, horizon and make lines, I mean, um, smaller and smaller. Like nothing when I'm done towards the horizon, it's almost nothing. If you just keep the paper like this angle, um, the gravity helps um, mingle, to mingle the um, colors better. Let me just clean the tape. Uh, but for the C, it's opposite, you know. Let me just have a little more blue to the sky. Um, for the C, it's opposite. It means, um, uh oh. Um, it means you need to start from the bottom and then go towards the horizon. I mean, it's totally opposite. The same color, 
using the same color and start from the bottom, go towards the horizon. And the same thing, when I'm reaching the horizon line, I make my lines um, smaller and thinner. Uh, the, the thing that it's different um, makes the water uh, different from the sky is you have to show uh, the ripples on the water. So it means we need um, color, the same color with more consistency. Okay, I'm going to use the same color, which is cobalt blue here. I mean, and, and I make it. Uh, darker here at the bottom. And, you know, I go towards the horizon again, but make it thinner lines when I'm over there. Um, actually, you need the, I mean, the same color, but now I'm creating waves. So it needs to be bigger brush strokes at the bottom. You can see I'm making brush, big brush strokes here. Uh, and when you are going towards the horizon, you need to make them, those ripples, I mean, thinner, smaller, like this. Again, I need, uh, because the heaviest part of my painting is at the bottom. I go with indigo, mix it with cobalt blue. Again, I go with uh, I go for those ripples, you know. But this time, um, again, I, I'm not covering the whole cobalt blue that I had before. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I mean, bigger ripples at the bottom, and when I'm reaching towards the horizon, I make them smaller and smaller. Uh, later, we um, add some um, shadow from boots or whatever we want to have in our painting. Um, so you, you can see how we will get more shadows um, at the bottom. is our um, water. Um, okay. But that's it. Um, now the paper is kind of moist, so I don't touch it um, anymore because if I touch it, I may ruin it um, completely. Um, I let it dry. And if I want to add a few things, I just make it um, wet again and do wet and wet. Or um, I told you, you can just do sky first and then do the sea. Um, but I did at the same time, I did it at the same time because I want you to see how you can, how you can make it like in one uh, wash, the first wash. Um, especially when you have small size of paper, you can do this. Okay, let it dry and then we work um, and the rest later. But while it's getting dry, I'm gonna show you how you can do boats. Okay, let me have a piece of paper. Uh, for boat, uh, first you need the shape of a boat. The easiest way that you can make the shape of a boat is, uh, let me just divide it into one. Um, okay, um, you need to make the shape of a boat first. The easiest way is having um, the infinity um, uh, 
infinity uh, symbol, which is this one. Um, then you continue, you have to continue towards the bottom in angle the way and have the bottom of the boot. So if you just eliminate this line, you will get the shape of a boot. Let me just Uh, you know, it's not kind of perfect boot, but it's a very simple way to get a shape of a boot. You know, you can just um, shape it, make it better. You can add more um, angle to it. You can make this part like um, triangle. You know, you can add few things. Um, in this part, you know, you can change it, but the uh, um, but the shape of the boat um, you want to have, you can create it by infinity symbol like this, okay? And of course, you will get the shadow of it or the water. Um, it's the easiest way, but of course, you can um, draw uh, a shape of the book. Okay, let me just try. Uh, if it it was a painting, I didn't do my shape uh, my boat uh, in the middle of the paper because you know it needs to be a little bit towards the left side or right side. It shouldn't be in the middle of the paper. But it's just um, knowing how you can do shapes, um, shape of a boot. Um, so okay, this is the boot. Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, always you have to do um, the shadow shapes as well. You know, the shadow of things, they are equal important as the shape of the things that you are um, uh, painting it. You know, if you have a tree, um, okay, it's a positive shape of a tree, but the shadow of a tree, it's the same, at the same level, it's important. You know, you need to have sketch the shadow of the tree as well. They are very important. Uh, so the same here. Um, you need to have the shape of a shadow here. And uh, again, uh, you know it that the shadow is a um, mirror image of the uh, shape of the object that you have. So if it the, this line goes this way. The other line should go um, this way. You know, we have the mirror image of the boat. And if if the sun is straight above the something, um, it needs to be the same size. You know, the shadow is the same size right here. Uh, but we don't know where is the uh, sun now, so uh, it's okay to have the just the mirror image of the shape, but doesn't matter how um, long we extend our shadow. But again, because the uh, water is, um, there is some ripples on it, so it's not like a straight line. It should be edgy and um, curvy line like this, you know, and it goes um, further, more or less, like the, it depends on the sun position in the sky. Um, let me just get rid of the hard line here. Then you can see the shape of the shadow as well. So you need to have it like wavy, uh, okay, for the boat, if uh, they could be white, they could be any kind of color, but doesn't matter. The same thing happens, but you have to do it the same. Um, 
steps, follow the same steps uh, that we are doing here. I mean, for sure, we need wet paper. We do wet and wet, so we have to wet the paper. In this case, I want to make the white boat, so I use neutral color, which is left over here. It's a kind of shadowy color, and I start at the, from the bottom, okay, from the bottom. I'm not worried about bleeding because it's a part of um, wet and wet painting, and I go straight up. Uh, this is first wash, which is the consistency of um, tea. The second wash, I need to dry my brush, use stronger color. I mean, the, the same color with more consistency <clears throat> and then add it right here. Um, it could be neutral um, tint or indigo if you don't have neutral tint but uh, it should be more in more consistency and also your brush should be um, dry. Okay, again, I'll just add a dark value at the bottom of the boat, still to it. Okay. So um, here, and, and then uh, of course you need to grab the this dark color um, towards the bottom of the boat. I mean, in water, and also you need to wash it out from the opposite side, which is this part. Now you need to wash it towards the edge of the boat. Then and a darker value. the bottom and it's time to add um, the other colors that you want to have on your boat which is sometimes it's a kind of um, orange here at the um, And the same thing happened here. I mean, you need to have a little bit of orange here, but they don't have certain shape because it's kind of uh, mixing with ripples in water. But a few touches would be enough. And push the hard edges and also a very, um, Sharp line, maybe, maybe same. Color. But of course, we need to make it darker as well. So when I'm done with it, um, it's time to make the darker part of the boat, which makes um, contrast to get the shape of the boat better. I mean, it could be inside the boat. There is some benches and also it could be um, the mast. I'm not sure the mast is located in which part of the boat. Okay, maybe here. I'm not sure, but doesn't matter. Uh, for mast, you can use your pinky 
as a standing, supporting um, tool, and then go down towards the boat. I mean, this part is bigger, wider, and when you go up, it's going to be smaller and thinner. And again, the same color. I'm going to use it somewhere here. Uh, lines and dots. We were talk. Uh, we talked about those lines and dots. And this part is the darkest part of the whatever you are. Um, creating shadow um, for it. And then the shadow getting lighter when it goes uh, down. Uh, but remember, the boat is white. So if you want to make um, the shadow for it, it means you need to have the uh, sea all around, you know, like this. Of course, we create the uh, um, water before, you know, before we are doing the boat. But if you want to make the uh, light shadow uh, of the boat because it's white, you can do two things. You can just, um, by lifting up, just um, grab some color, but not in this part. The connection part needs to be very dark. Um, Grab some color of it, uh, the opposite shape of this one, because it, it goes this way. So you need to go that way, you know, like this. Okay, and also you can have a darker value around the boat, like I told you, I mean, it goes this way. So you can have darker uh, value like negative painting that we did for flowers um, in this side of the boat. You know, when you just um, with negative uh, shaping shape the shadow of the boat, you will get the reflection of the light um, white boat underwater. Um, or lift the um, color with paper towel. I mean, still it's a lifting up technique, using lifting up technique. Um, and now you know how you uh, can shape, I mean, make your boat uh, 3D, because um, you need to make it, I mean, a light, uh, I mean, go from light to dark. So it makes it kind of curvy and, um, 3D. That's it. And a few ripples here and there. And of course, we are some ripples over the um, shadow because still it's in the water. And also with that mop brush, um, you can create. Um, ropes uh, few ropes that they are connected to the um, boat they have knots over here a few birds in the sky and also you can have um, some ropes, uh, wider ones in the water by adding clean water um, to the wet, almost wet um, they could be partially dark, partially um, white when it goes inside the uh, water. It 
can be like this. Or you can add the shadow of them like um, the mast. If I just go, I have to <laughs> go downwards. Um, if you want to have the shadow of the mast, it comes like here, but it should be curvy, not because of the ripples, you know, it should be like this. And the uh, ropes, they are in opposite direction. As I told you, you can have those um, lines as well. You know, and uh, uh, everything that you have on your boat, like for example, this one, you can have the shadow in opposite um, direction, okay? <clears throat> And of course, we can exaggerate the shadow over here to match the shadow of the mast and so on. Um, okay, I believe it's dry by now. Let's see. Almost dry. Oh. Not dry, completely dry. Okay, the sky is dry. Let's do a sky and then we go back to water. Um, now it's time to um, do your, uh, use your masking tape to have the perfect horizon. And you have to be sure that you're having perfect uh, fixed tape here. There shouldn't be any gap between the tape and the sky. Okay, uh, so you can wet the sky again and do um, trees or whatever buildings or whatever you have in the stands. Um, in this case i want to have dark clouds in the sky and also have a little um a row of the green trees um in the background okay let's just wet the paper again you can cover the bottom to make sure that um, any damages on your theme. Okay, uh, now it's totally wet. Uh, it means I need to use dry brush. I dry my brush and the dark clouds. Um, uh, I decide where I want I want to put my clouds up. So maybe one comes like right here. And you see, I'm, I'm following the shape of the clouds. They are kind of um, made of round shapes, like fluffy uh, clouds and then in both sides, they go um, get um, thinner. Uh, don't worry about bleeding because you can just stand them as um, another cloud over here. Um, same dark color, dry brush. Gonna mix it with burnt sienna. So I'm planning to have burnt sienna on my trees. So I'm thinking about the colors that I want to use later. 
now and for um, counterbalancing, I add them here as well in one part of the um, clouds and have different sizes of clouds, uh, especially if you want to have perspective, I mean, depth in your painting. Okay, you can have bigger shape of clouds here. And then when you go uh, towards the horizon, you can make them um, lighter and even smaller, you know, that makes uh, those clouds uh, push them away. Um, step away from your painting from time to time to see what's going on. Um, and if you need to fix it, it's time to fix it. Because <laughs> if it's still wet, so we can fix it uh, way easier comparing to um, dry uh, painting. Again, I try to make shapes and try to make them uneven. Some of them should comes, come from outside um, to in. It makes, helps uh, perspective uh, better. If you have just put them, um, a part of them out of the uh, frame. So um, yeah, that's it. I have to stop, not to overdo it. <laughs> um, you got the point. So bigger clouds in front and smaller ones. Um, when you're getting closer to horizon. Um, now I do uh, trees. Again, I'm using that brush that I um, grinded for this reason. Oh, okay, yeah, here. Um, Just a second, I think somebody's calling me, so I have to wait. And um, if you have something like, uh, oh, oh, sorry, but let me just change the direction. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah, sometimes you have puddle uh, here. Um, so you can just dab the paper towel to get rid of it. Um, but the better way is tilt the paper uh, from side to side, then you will get the um, even uh, amount of water in the place. Okay, let's do the trees. I'm gonna use my damaged brush. Um, again, having those uh, trees in the background. But this time I want to use not green, but uh, the same color that I use for clouds. I just use the leftover um, that's why um, I use burnt sienna here because it's kind of um, uh, the, the color of the uh, trunk of the trees. So it helped me to um, uh, to have a better 
concept of the trees in distance. Um, again, the same thing, but now I'm I'm um, I do it uh, easier because I have the tape here. And I hopefully sticks too well. Not ruin the horizon line and just um, different touches in the background. And because it's red, it blends to, uh oh, I think the tape is not working here. There is gap here, so it doesn't matter. You're going to fix it. Um, and when you have something like this in the background, um, they are um, almost unseen. Uh, you can add few touches like uh, the blue that you used here, which is um, cobalt blue or any kind of blue that you used here, but uh, mix it with white to make it neutral. It shouldn't be this much sharp, okay, when you make it neutral. And um, just add few things, dots, um, somewhere here in between. I mean, not too much. Few dots would be enough because, again, we need a counterbalance in our painting. Um, that's enough. You know, whatever color you have uh, in specific space in your painting you need to have somewhere else um, I guess it didn't work the tape because it was too wet and there is gap between the tape and the um, paper but it's okay it doesn't matter that much uh, you know what happened here you got the idea uh, but consider it as a happy accident because um, we need to have the reflection of the distance trees um, in the water somehow, that it happened um, perfectly here. But still you can see the, uh, the uh, tape trace here still you can see it, it's enough, you know, because when you look at the painting, you can see a straight line for horizon. We can later exaggerate that line with adding some wet and dry uh, brush strokes. Um, okay, so let me just fade this line which is from the tape over here. Uh, for the ripples, uh, I mean here, they can have the boat, but it should be in different color. It, actually, we can make white boat again here by adding more color to the uh, to surrounding um, and exaggerating. the white shape of it, um, oh. then you will get the white um, bow too. But let's try another color, which is um, kind of um, wooden color, which is yellow ochre plus burnt sienna, raw amber, this kind of colors. But I'm trying to let it dry, okay. So it's almost, almost dry. Um, I told you about this part. Uh, and if you want to have a borderline, um, the horizon line more um, visible, uh, then you can go over um, the line at few dark um, brush strokes over there. And also the same thing at the bottom. You know, it means you are dividing um, 
horizon line and make it even lighter here. Um, this is the technique that we use for the line of the glassy um, jars ways to create lines around the jar. Um, maybe you can see it here. You can see white line. I mean, lighter, it's not white, but it's a uh, lighter line here. You can do add a dark value uh, underneath and a little bit above it. So you will get the light um, line here. So this technique is very useful for creating the um, water line in the uh, glassy ways. So again, I'm gonna um, continue with making shapes here. Um, again, you can create buildings as well in this um, part. Let me show you how. If you just make the straight lines like this, or I mean, I told you, I mean, if they should be structured like this, I mean, triangle, rectangle, um, stuff like this, then you will get the shape of the buildings, you know. And of course, few lines at the top, few uh, darker dots. Um, and also, um, Uh, even uh, the color of the roof. Um, it's kind of orange. Um, so it represents the buildings over here. Uh, with few touches, you can see buildings in distance. They are not really buildings, they are just um, brush strokes. So but they are structured, you know, but because they are very, I mean, they have shapes of like um, rectangle, triangle. Um, so you can see buildings. Uh, in the stance. Um, even you can uh, add few touches of um, gouache or acrylic that I have here or Chinese white. Let me just use Chinese white um, out of tube. Um, And then, you know, this white, actually it's too watery. It's not, um, maybe in dry places it works better. Just add a few dots and lines. It's better to use the, I mean, acrylic because it's too, water, let me just try this one. Um, you know, uh, anything that can help you to uh, improve your painting, um, it's good. Just use it. I mean, it's your painting and the goal is make things better and more beautiful. Even you can have um, white, birds uh, in dark places in the sky, you know. They are just um, like dots, um, but 
you know, when you are doing this, it means you are um, adding movement in your pen. Let me just show you uh, what I have. Um, I had a painting I submitted in California Art Club exhibition. It's, um, if I can find it, uh, I used a lot of this technique there. Um, <clears throat> and you can see uh, what a huge impact um, those white uh, touches could have on whole painting. Unfortunately, I don't have it here. Maybe I try to this one. Let's see. Uh... <clears throat> oh, maybe I don't have it here as well. Um, Okay. Uh, okay, let me show you something else. Um, this one. Uh, look at this. Actually, this is the photo uh, that I used as a reference photo for this one. And do you remember I told you there were no people there? Um, I add few people and dog and few, even I add this building to it uh, as well. I mean, and you can see, I just put um, rooftop for my painting because I want it to be uh, more colorful and uh, having more movement in my painting. So I just um, did this one and I picked few things that I love in this painting, like rocks, but I changed the position of rocks. So I just put them together. You can, maybe you can see better. Um, yeah, I, I change, change it a lot. You can see I have um, a lot is going on um, here in my painting, but it's more, uh, I mean, calmer and without any noise in it. Maybe as a photo, it's, it's a good, uh, beautiful photo. But when you want to change it into a painting, you need to uh, make some adjustment. Um, so uh, again, I couldn't find that one, but you can see I add few um, white. I'm not sure they are Chinese white or maybe the same acrylic that I used here, uh, white acrylic. Um, I mean, you can use both. Actually, I used, uh, I mean, put some dots here, but when you look at it, you can see birds maybe, or few dots here. They could be birds. Um, they are on, actually I did birds here <laughs> intentionally. And I add few white, I mean, Chinese white over here. And I told you I scratched the paper um, in the stance with X-Acto knife to get those shiny, uh, sparkly um, light in the stance. Um, so yeah, you can do um, changes, a lot changes according to your experience. Of course, you need to have the several times to get um, know how you can um, add things or eliminate things, of course. Let me just fix this part. Okay, let's add um, a boat here. And 
um, okay, again, you can uh, draw a boat uh, with pencil or you can use just your um, brush and color. Okay, I wanna add, because I have a lot of things over here in the right side, I prefer to have my boat over here and left side. Um, okay, again, I'm trying to make the shape of the boat uh, because it's in foreground closer to us. It's bigger and also I can have another boat in distance. Um, it should be smaller. Um, and then I will uh, let you know how you can have even both in uh, further than uh, that small one over there. Uh, okay, let's do this one. Um, I can make it white. Um, I don't know. Do you like it white or a different color? Because, <laughs> you know, both are very um, tricky. Um, the, the darker boat of course you need to use different colors but for making um white uh boat in colored paper it's uh, another story um i can do both but let's make it i mean darker uh boat because we already had the white one okay again i'm going to use the um water i can wet the um boat partially or I can cover the rest of the painting and just spray um, water in this spot. Okay, the first layer that I want to use is um, yellow ochre that I have in my painting and also I have in my palette. Um, again, towards the top of the boat. And the next color could be um, Indian red or burnt sienna. I just apply it in the bottom. Um, you know, now I can change the shape of, shape of my boat as well. You know, uh, I want to make it wider. Um, again, I'm master of my painting, so I can do any changes that I want. So when I'm reaching towards the edge of the boat, I make the color lighter. Um, then burnt sienna. More consistency. Okay, now the darker value. It could be um, the mixing of indigo, paints gray, neutral tint with burnt sienna that I use here. Um, so, but it should be darker, you know, for sure. Even bigger. You can see how I changed my the shape of my boat right here. Okay. Make this part a lot bigger. Again, if I have um, another color on my boat, it's time to add it here. Oh, let me just use a little bit of orange into it. So, and you know, in the wooden um, boat like this, there are some um, lines. You can create them by using the tip of the brush and clean water. Again, you know, the technique that we used before. Or even you can make them with a darker value and do lines 
on the on its body. And I told you, you need to have the shape of the um, shadow. It goes like this, the same, I mean, mirror mage um, that we have here. Okay, when we have the outline, it's time to use the same color, but of course, a little bit darker because the shadow is darker than the object. And then we start from the bottom, mainly mingle here because it's still wet. Um, darker value, let's have it like the, <clears throat> it's a kind of um, wavy, edgy um, shape of the shadow. And when it goes towards the, um, Bottom, it uh, it goes. I mean, a little lighter, you know. Don't overdo it. And also, I have to fix this part as well. And I'm gonna mix um, the color at the bottom. Uh, so add the dark value to the bottom of the boat and the same thing, repeating the same thing. Uh, whatever I have um, in my boat, like mast or whatever I have here, I need to have the shadow of them on the water. Okay, let's use wet and dry because this part is dry now. Okay, let's have the mast. I'm trying to make it longer. I use my pinky as a supporting tool. Um, but, you know, again, I'm making some movement and um, things happening on the boat. Um, Need, um, needs to be like um, <clears throat> dots and lines that you already uh, know about them. But try to have broken lines, dots, um, and of course, few things, I don't know, maybe supported, uh, the, it could be kind of, I don't know, stuff in boat, um, which makes it, creates more movement here. And also, uh, you know, you can have the dark line here, or also you can have the light line over here by scratching the paper in that specific place. So <clears throat> use your mopping liner. Um, to make the tiny long things, ropes and connecting things in your Okay, again, the shadow of those ropes could be in the um, here in water as well. The mast exactly the same place. It goes like this. Um, the ropes again, different, I mean, opposite direction. I told you, I mean, oh, opposite direction is this way. Sorry, uh, this way, yeah because it's mirror image. And the shadow of things, you know, here maybe we have something, uh, it goes like this, it should be go like this. 
Um, the same thing uh, for the distance boat, uh, but that one doesn't need this much work. It's enough to just make a shape of it. Um, having mast, um, tiny little mast here, and a lot of shadow on the water. Not much detail for this one. And if you have some tiny little ropes, of course we need to have the shadow of them on the water as well. No, but the opposite direction. And few birds in the sky. We had the light, I mean, white birds, and we can add dark birds too, bigger and smaller to create movement in the uh, painting. Um, okay, how we can make uh, the birds? Uh, it should be like, um, um, It's like um, check mark, okay? But uh, check mark is like this, but you can uh, have create some movement in it. It shouldn't be like a straight, like wavy um, and smaller, bigger, you know, or even you can add few wings um, in different directions to your, uh, the sides of the um, bird's body to create the um, beautiful shape of the birds, okay? It's a like check mark. Um, but that's it. And let me just remove the tape on both. Then you can see the result better. Uh, okay, you can unmute yourself and then uh, talk about things that you learned today or if you have any suggestion or comments or... Anything else you can share with us. And this one, cloudy weather, uh, again, cloudy weather, but light um, cloud, white cloud and versus dark cloud. And also you'll learn how to do boats, white boats and dark ones, okay. Uh, I enjoyed your question. Oh, thank you, Olga. Thank you for being here. I really enjoyed your painting too. <laughs> I had a very wonderful time with you guys. Um, okay. 